Good evening, everyone. After loaded with all the food, now I think we shall go through the some walk. All right. Imagine you are walking into a tropical forest in Malaysia. Take a deep breath. Enjoy the forest air. And open your eyes and look. This is how it looks like at 9 o'clock in the morning of a primary forest in Malaysia. So how about it looks like when it's at 9 o'clock in the evening? Can you see your own fingers? Can you see any things? Do you see a tiny little mushrooms, the glowing mushrooms? Walk closer to the light, you will see them. So, I'm a mycologist. I work a lot with the mushrooms. And today I will share with you what we have done on talking about the bioluminescence mushrooms. If you have watched the movie Awata, I believe that you are amazed by the glowing wonder of the Pandora forest. And this scene is actually happening right here in Malaysia. We're scavenging the forest in Malaysia and we're trying to look for these tiny little growing mushrooms. And the mushrooms are real. These bioluminescent mushrooms are real and they are rare. They are very difficult to find. And and they're pretty. The bioluminescent mushrooms you can find in the tropical forest as well as the temperate forest. And it actually like to grow on those moist substrate, which like a rotten wood or leaves. So Aristotle first described that the light is actually come from the rotten wood. And Pliny the Elders, who is actually uh, authors and also a naturalist during the Roman Empire mentioned that, that white fungi could be found on the decaying trees. So this light is normally, they would call it as a shining wood or fox fire. Bioluminescence, bios, the words mean, is coming from the Greek words called living. And the lumens means, in the Latin words, called light. So bioluminescence is actually a phenomenon produced, um, come up from the living organisms that produce a visible light. And over the years, the scientists actually found out that this is coming from a chemical reaction, where you have a molecule called the ruciferin, mixed with the enzyme called the ruciferase, and with the presence of the oxygen, it's actually bring it to the one excited molecule. It's called the oxyluciferase, and they're producing the light. And much bioluminescent mushrooms is sharing the same tricks like the fireflies. And in Malaysia, we actually the sorry um, throughout the world. Bioluminescent mushroom is very rare and it's only documented 73 species out of the 100,000 that have been described. And they will be expected there's more actually found in tropical forests. So, bioluminescence is actually in a group of scientists come from Sweden that actually suggested that the bioluminescence, um, particular functions of this bioluminescence from the living organisms could be divided to different categories. First, is used for the reproduction, which like uh, fire, the fireflies or glowworms, which they want to attract their opposite mate. Or second, they want to be uh, protected from the predators. So they were trying to um, camouflage themselves to diverting the attentions of the predators, or they're actually 
uh, work as like a food acquisition, which they are trying to be attracting the prey to come and eat them, or actually aid the visions for the prey to look for them. And it could be also the bioluminescence could be coming from the byproducts of a metabolism, or it could be during the bioluminescence is actually producing some um, photolysis enzymes to actually go for the DNA repair. So it depends on the species. The mushroom, the bioluminescent mushrooms can be found in the different parts of the fruiting bodies. It can be at the fruiting bodies, which is the spores um, forming structures, or it can be at their mycelium, which their vegetative part, or they can glow in both the cap, the fruiting bodies, or the mycelium. And there's a research found that a species called a mycena is actually when they started to form a baby mushrooms after 10 hours they're forming. So when the cap is starting to expanding and their stack is starting to elongating, so when they're fully expanded until they're fully mature, kept up to like upflated, which is after 30, 30 hours, that is having the highest light intensity. And they started to fade, the light started to fade after 50 hours when the fruiting bodies begins to decay. So their lifespan in the forest is very short. Even though the bioluminescence mushroom compared to other living um, organisms who are producing the bioluminescence, their light intensity is not as high as them. But the luminescence, bioluminescence mushroom in bioluminescence is actually producing day and night and can stand for several days. So we were asking, what actually they do to us? What actually can the application to us? Their bioluminescence in their nature because they would like to attract the insects to help them to, for the spore dispersal. And evidence also show that the insects are more attracted to the bioluminescent light rather than the non-luminescence mushrooms which have the same size and shape. But how these bioluminescent mushrooms do to us? What type of application they can give us, give to the human being? Can there be a future light source? Can they uh, become like a bioreporters for toxicity testing or as a biosensor? So before we can answer those questions, we have to go out there and start discovering them, describing them, and make them as a public report before we can really tell what is the, their untold potential. So today, I would like to bring you to my journey, how actually we are finding these bioluminescent mushrooms and how actually we giving them the names and classify them. So these are some of the items I will bring for my mushroom collections. I will bring my pocket knife, I will bring my paintbrush, the GPS, the camera, and also the paper bag. Not to forget, dress myself like a honey hunter by wearing the hat and also the long leech socks to prevent the leech. I am at your right side. That is me. When I, that's my dress when I go into the jungle. In the field, when we find the mushrooms, when we find the bioluminescent mushrooms, what we're going to do is actually we will take a photo on their natural habitats and we start to observe where actually are they growing. Are they growing from the woods? Or are they growing from the leaves? And most of these bioluminescent mushrooms are small. How small is it? It's around, it's between 1 to 5 cm. And because of the low intensity bioluminescent light they have, it's very difficult to find them. And if we go unnoticed, if we're really not in the complete darkness, we sometimes we will miss them as well. And later on, when we bring it back to the University of Malaya, we were going to describe with the uh, morphologies. So we start with their 
macromorphology, which is their appearance. What can you see with your naked eyes? So we start with describing them like what is their size and shapes by their different development stage. So we will just describe with their caps, the color, the texture, the size, the shapes, and also the gills, which is underneath the caps, the colors, the spacings, how you attach to the step, and also the step texture, the color, the width, the how tall is it. So with all these informations, then we will store these mushrooms for the dryer. Then later on, we will start to observing on their microscopy characteristics. So we will take a piece of tissue and look it under the microscopes. So we will look it, finding for the spore, finding for the uh, structure, the basidias. So then after we all this information, we actually starting to getting their DNA. We get their DNA and then we will send for a process which we want to find the precise order of a nucleotide within a DNA molecule. Then it's called the DNA sequencing. Then we start to have the information and we start to build up the, the evolutionary relationships and we biologically classify them by giving them the names. Over the three years of sampling, we actually went to a 25 reserve forest in Peninsula Malaysia and we actually have found at 85 different types of um, no, different, 85 collections of the Balmizan mushrooms and out of that we found out that 15 species of Balmizan mushrooms and 8 of them are new to science and how actually we normally give the names to a new uh, species we can give the names by finding where actually this, this species first collected or based on their unique structures or you can name after someone who have been greatly contributed in the respective field. So out of the eight species, we name them, some of them we name it by using our Malay language. For example, Mycena sinar, Mycena seminal, Mycena Sina Tangkai Sina. So those the word seminal, cahaya, sinar in Bahasa Malaysia in our Malay language is meaning of the shine, glow, illuminate. Malaysia is actually starting to have diminishings of this biodiversity. We can't really give a price that if we didn't really documenting all these valuable bioluminescent species. With two millions of fungi that have yet to be described, and actually we should keep more on documenting them, on understanding them of their biodiversity, on their ecology functions. Because one day, our lives might depend on a species that we never heard of. Thank you.